see in that demo there, for Project Soul, there's a lot of reflections and a lot of ray tracing used there so that it looks very nice. It was a, it's a new way of showing off graphics by combining rasterization and ray tracing. So, our Turing architecture was built for RTX technology. In it, we obviously have the new revamped Turing SM, but we also have included Tensor cores, which were previously only available in voltage GPUs for deep learning, and also the RT core, obviously for ray tracing. So, so, oh, oops. so, one of the key things about the Turing architecture is that it's the first time we're able to fuse all these things together, right? Uh, Tim Sweeney, of the CEO of Epic, um, Epic Games, you know, he, he also mentions this, where it's the first time we're able to combine all of these for an awesome experience in your games, you know, providing the next generation of games. So, Okay, 어, 미러볼도 보시면 제대로 물리적으로 어, 과학 법칙에 맞게 그런 표현이 되고 있습니다. 이렇게 움직이는 물체, 에, 뭐 어떤 거 상관없이 과학적으로 현실과 같은 그래픽을 보실 수 있습니다. So you can see how ray tracing can be used in just such a small space of a Cornell box. 코넬 박스라는 이런 작은 공간에서 ray tracing이 어떻게 적용되는지 보셨습니다. Now. A large part of Kyle's demo there, especially with the GI ball and the mirror ball at the end, you notice that there's a lot of global illumination there. So to show off global illumination, one of the games that's coming out very soon, well, relatively soon, not that soon, the Metro Exodus really uses global illumination in a very big way. So you can see that with global illumination, it, the lighting looks a lot more realistic. In the past, this type of scene, the developers need to put fake lights within the house to get the ambient light. 이렇게 지금 아예 어, 글로벌 일루미네이션 전역 조명을 사용해서 굉장히 자연스럽게 표현이 되었습니다. 근데 어, 이걸 사용하지 않았을 때는 예전에는 이 정도 밝기를 만들어내려면 개발자들이 이리저리로 위에 빛을 달아야 됐거든요. So you can see this is how Metro is using global illumination within their game. 메트로가 게임 안에서 전역 조명을 어떻게 사용했는지 보여주는 게임이다. And the special thing here is they're using a single light source which is just the sun. 여기 광원이 다들 광원이죠. 햇빛밖에 없습니다. And it's being sped up to 20x more time lapse so that, you know, the time of day is changing. 그래서 20배로 타임랩스를 했기 때문에 하루 중에 시간이 바뀌는 거에 따라서 또 빛이 바뀌는 거 보실 수 있습니다. So for those of you that have tried Metro the series, uh, you know that it's a post-apocalyptic world. Monsters jump out from you from every direction. It's a fun game, but with GI, they can do so much more with it. It will look more realistic. And you'll notice the places that are dark are actually dark. The lighting is correct. The places that are light, bright, 
they're accurately light lit. So when you look at this, you can tell that they have a lot of places they can start hiding monsters and stuff like that that you probably did. <laughs> 하지만 밝은 데는 밝고 또 어두운 데는 굉장히 어둡기 때문에 몬스터들을 숨기기도 쉽죠. 그래서, so, of course, because it's close to apocalyptic, the time of day really makes a difference when it's daytime and nighttime. This game is entirely different. So, using global illumination, they can bring so much more to the story and the storytelling of the game. 포스트 아포칼립스 세상이기 때문에 다른 조명이 없기 때문에 낮과 밤이 차이가 굉장히 극명하고 그렇기 때문에 저녁 조명이 스토리텔링이나 그 스토리 자체에도 많은 기여를 할수 있습니다. Another game that actually just came out, unfortunately, it doesn't support RTX or uh, Ray Tracing just yet, but it will soon enough, and it is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Shadow of the Tomb Raider입니다. 최근에 이제 출시가 됐는데 아직까지는 RTX나 Ray Tracing이 서포트가 되지 않지만 곧될 겁니다. So obviously for Tomb Raider, ambiance is very important. Tomb Raider 같은 경우는 그 앰비언스가 굉장히 주, 중요하죠. Especially when you're sneaking around outside or going to other areas, they want to make sure the ambiance feels very good. So, when you're walking or swimming, it's important to make the ambiance feel very good. Or at least realistic. <laughs> so, what you see here is relative. It's for today's graphics. It's pretty good. So, ambiance is just how to describe it. It's just an artificial environment. Besides ray tracing, a large part of what people have been talking about in NVIDIA recently was is deep learning. Ray tracing deep learning. There's been a bunch of development in specifically image-related deep learning recently that I think is really good to share some with you. 특히 이미지 관련한 딥 러닝에 대해서 발전도 많고 관심도 많기 때문에 그몇 가지를 공유해 드릴까 합니다. So, as you see here, people are using uh, deep learning to take black and white, old black and white photos and making them look realistically colored. 그래서 어, 딥 러닝을 사용해서 흑백 사진을 색을 덜 입힐 수도 있고요. <웃음> uh, the middle one is segmentation, where we take a very basic, kind of like a it's not very detailed of a scene, and then use AI to bright, make it look like a real, uh, real street. Segmentation입니다. 그냥 어, 어 굉장히 디테일이 부족한 대충 그린 그런 이미지를 가지고 AI가 좀 리얼한 영상이나 사실 이미지를 만들어 주는 것이죠. The third one is actually done by L'Oreal, and it's you can see that on the left that's her original hair color, but you can use AI or deep learning to make it look like when they're selling hair dye. It looks realistically like her hair color changed. 그 다음은 모델에서 만든 건데요. 왼쪽 사진이 원래 머리색이고 염색을 했을 때 어떻게 표현되는지 자연스럽게 보여줍니다. We can use AI to enhance resolution. 해상도를 개선하는 데도 AI가 역할을 할수 있고요. For Clara, it's our medical imaging research, and right now you're able to take less information, like it's it's regular or old 
information. And deep learning adds to it, making a higher resolution, higher um, quality uh, image for doctors to diagnose. <laughs> 어, 그 다음은 흑아 메디컬 이미지인데요. 저희 의료 영상 쪽 관련된 것입니다. 굉장히 제한된 정보가 있는 그런 이미지를 AI가 해상도도 높이고 퀄리티를 높여서 의료진들이 사용할 수 있도록 합니다. And for sketch to face, it's basically taking a very simple drawing and then making it into a 3D cartoon. 간단한 그림을 3D 카툰으로 바꿔주는 스케치 투 페이스입니다. So you can see there's a lot of development going on in deep learning. 보시다시피 deep learning에서 굉장히 많은 분야에 이제 개발이 되고 있습니다. Now, we introduced the tensor core with our Volta architecture, and that's pretty much specifically for deep learning or DNN uh, acceleration. And Turing, our Turing architecture or GPUs, have inherited this um, deep, uh, the tensor core, and then we can also use this for DNNs within games. 튜링 아키텍처에도 이 텐서 코어를 받아들여서 DNN 게임인 DNN으로 쓸 수가 있습니다. So this is one of the things we're we're introducing something called NVIDIA NGX along with Turing. 튜링과 함께 저희가 NVIDIA NGX라는 것을 소개해 드립니다. So what it basically is is we're able to use deep learning, train models on our supercomputers. Work with game developers and incorporate into games so that gamers have a better experience and they can do more on their game. Because there's so many applications that. Deep learning을 사용해서 슈퍼 컴퓨터 위 슈퍼 컴퓨터에서 모델을 계속 트레이닝을 합니다. 그래서 그 결과를 게임 개발자들이 쓰는 거죠. Deep learning을 게임에 적용할 수 있는 응용할 수 있는 사례는 굉장히 많습니다. So for in this instance, where we've announced something called DLSS or NVIDIA DLSS, what we do is we take what we call the ground truth. Which is a very super high quality image and train a network with it. 그래서 DLSS를 소개해 드리는데요. 그라운드 트루스 이미지 굉장히 높은 퀄리티의 이미지를 가지고 어, 모델을 트레이닝 시킵니다. And then we're able to use a lower resolution uh, image or basically a game and then run it using the trained model so that you get super high quality with better performance. 그래서 굉장히 낮은 해상, 낮은 해상도의 이미지라든지 게임 같은 것들에 어, 트레인된 모델을 적용을 해서 개선을 하는 거죠. So here, this is a screenshot from uh, Epic's Infiltrator demo. Epic의 Infiltrator demo의 스크린샷입니다. So you can see that in terms of for 4K gaming, a 4K TAA, which is really common in games today, can look uh, 4K DLSS can look better than um, 4K TAA. 널리 쓰이는 4K TAA랑 DLSS의 그 결과물을 비교해 보시면 DLSS 쪽이 좀더 뚜렷하죠. In terms of qual image quality, largely to be fair, it's comparable, but there are areas because of the temporal aspect of TAA, you get kind of blurring or something that doesn't look quite right. 이미지 퀄리티 자체는 이두 개가 그렇게 큰 차이는 없는데 그 TAA의 그 시간적인 속성 때문에 이렇게 움직일 때 이미지가 블러되는 현상이 있습니다. Now to be fair, DLSS isn't fully like the, the best thing ever right now. It's the great, greatest thing about it is it, because it uses deep learning, it will get better over time. DLSS의 장점은 이게 딥 러닝 기반이기 때문에 앞으로 점점 더 나아질 거라는 거죠. So, because we're able to use DLSS, you can see that compared to our 1080 Ti, our 2080 Ti is already better performance. But with DLSS, we can double the performance of a 1080 Ti. 그래서 1080 Ti 하고 2080 Ti만 비교해도 이미 그 퍼포먼스가 더 높은 2080이 거기다가 DLSS까지 사용하면 퍼포먼스가 거의 두 배로 늘어납니다. There are many RTX coming, RTX games coming. Um, one thing I would like to kind of clarify here is some people think RTX games means ray tracing. <coughs> Which they wouldn't be wrong. 
However, I mentioned earlier when we talk about RTX technologies, it's really about the fusion between rasterizing, ray tracing, compute, and AI. So for NVIDIA, when we say RTX games, we're really talking about it could be using NGX, it could be using ray tracing, it could be using both. But it's not exclusive of any of the other ones. So it can be, uh, you'll see here that some of them use both uh, NGX and ray tracing, some just use ray tracing, some just use D, uh, DLSS or NGX. So NVIDIA is not going to be able to use RTX, and NGX is also going to be able to use ray tracing, and NGX is also going to be able to use ray tracing. So all the RTX games are going to be able to use ray tracing. So NVIDIA RTX is really more of an over-encompassing over um, brand that covers all of these. So a lot of people hear us talk about the latest and greatest, right? Ray tracing, NGX, all this stuff, but how does it actually perform our current games? So with the RTX 2080 Ti, we're able to show, uh, actually 2080, uh, we're able to